guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have one of my favorite brands. I am uh, an old VW fanboy. Way back in the day, I was never be able to afford a GTI, ever, ever. In fact, I bought a Mark V Golf and put a GTI kit on it when I was younger. I'm that guy, yeah, I had a fake GTI. But today, as we start her up, we have a Mark VI GTI. I've never actually shot one of these for the channel, so it intrigues me quite a lot because this is the generation I knew nothing about growing up around the VW brand. I love the 7, you know, Mark 7 GTI. I thought that was an insane car. We've done so many on the channel. The Mark V was my BL and end old GTI. I absolutely love that platform. The Mark VI slots in where, me personally, I don't know much about it, and I've never shot one, so. And the first thing I'm gonna say is, I'm a super lazy driver, so a DSG, big, comfy, seat-wearing, hot hatch, ticks all the boxes for me straight away. But if you haven't already, like this video, subscribe to the channel. Let's go and see what this car's like. If you're willing to own one of these Mark VI GTIs, there's a few things that I've tried to go through pre me actually picking this up. We're talking about mileages, how much stuff is, tax, fuel, everything like that. You're probably gonna wanna know if you actually are up for buying one of these. Now I'm gonna start off with the fact that this is not a standard car. As you'll see by the outside, it's wearing different wheels with some new Michelin tires. It's slightly lowered on some lowering springs and it has a DSG gearbox remap. And I'll just tip it over into manual mode. And it has an RTX stage one map, taking it around you know, 210 they are from the factory, depending on who you ask on the internet. This one now is running 281 brake horsepower a lot of gain really 70 horsepower say from a remap so second gear Ooh. Ooh, makes a good sound it's also got a miltech on the back of it so that just creates a very easy dailyable car this very very easy to daily it is a really nice place to be but the excitement levels have been ramped up a bit with an induction kit the miltech exhaust system with a 200 cell sports cap it does just hype the gti or any gti up in my opinion but i feel like just adding those slight components means that you'll get just a better driving experience and sixth gear it shuts up just leisurely go about your day in your hot hatch golf if you look at the market there isn't loads of these out there this one at 43,620 miles is very low mileage for the year uh, I feel like it's gonna be harder to find one of these. It's gonna be more expensive. This though is an imported car from Japan. I will say that now. Although I won't disclose how much the owner paid for this car, I feel like that's something you need to note because out there, they range massively. So if you are on the market and buying one of these, you'll probably notice the vastness array of price on these cars. They go from basically five and a half, six grand for a, you know, a relatively high mileage, bit of a, maybe it's got a shady parts, who knows? All the way up, I seen one today for 15 grand. Super low mileage, very, very nice car. Your borderline, uh, you know, addition money for that money in my opinion, but you'll usually find these for around 10, 12 grand. You'll find pretty nice ones with a bit more mileage, you know, maybe even at 100,000 miles, UK cars, you know, eight to 10 grand. A lot of car for the money, considering the Mark V ranges from, you know, you can really buy really cheap, horrible ones, don't get me wrong, three grand, uh, up to five, you know, Pirelli editions are 10. These, the vast array of price means that it's quite hard for me to gauge which one's right because you could jump into a five and a half grand one, it'd be absolutely fantastic. And you could jump into a very low mileage 15 grand one, say, which I did see to sell. So one on eBay for 15,000 pounds. And that one, because it's got low mileage, might need belts and tires and this and that, you don't know. But huge array of price. MPG, now they actually claim in the 30s, I think 38, you will probably get that on a run. You'll probably get 40 on a run on a motorway if you tickle the throttle a little bit. Around here, it's getting, you know, 25 to 30 very easily round town, B-Row bashing, all that good stuff. But again, as you come out of manual mode, it does cycle up to, you know, fifth gear at basically what is 40 mile an hour. So pretty good on fuel. I must admit though, it's a bit windy, but 
it does look good. I think it looks contemporary. You wouldn't know it's a 2012 car when you look at it on the 62 plate. Put a private plate on it. Not a lot of people would know the difference. And I think just for that fact, it's a bit of a bargain. Just looking at it from here, it does look very good. Windy though, very windy today. Well, I was going to stop here because there's a nice cafe here. It's closed. <laughs> so we'll have to go to the new agents next door. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> Into the nicer local in Gernard we go. I always try and go and support local businesses in these videos. Sometimes it's really hard because a lot of them are closed in the winter months. If you do have a local business on the Isle of Wight and you would like me to come and have some coffee with you in a nice car, let me know. Anyway, let's go and get a drink. A few inches later. We're back. Uh, rain total body fuel today. Shout out. These are really nice. Now we're going to do um, the typical cup holder test. Now, this car, there is not really a cup holder down here, but VW products love to put big bins in the door. So you could probably get a two litre bottle down here very, very easily. In fact, remember from our Mark 5 days, you could easily get a two litre bottle in the actual bins. Something that a consumer, an owner of the car might want to know. You can get a divider, I'm convinced, for the center of these. This doesn't have it. So in the cockpit, as it goes at the moment, there isn't too many places to put my carbonated canned beverage today. But I do like where the window switches are. They're quite high up. So if you're sort of driving, the window switches are sort of there. Buttons are there. There isn't too much in the way of you looking down on a button in this car or in this generation of golf just little consumer things just little consumer things you know anyway i'm going to sip on this um fantastic bca amino acid thing zero sugar though so that's a shout in the Mark 6 GTI today that I've been driving with you know done a good thrashing I've enjoyed it we've now calmed down leisurely driving around in drive I feel like it isn't too distant from a Mark 7 there is characteristics that I felt today that you'd only necessarily feel if they were back to back from a 7 to a 6 this one just feels a little bit tighter it's lower mileage on suspension it's got an exhaust it feels a little bit more lively than the standard I don't know if you'll notice that or not from you know buying one of these and buying from mark 7 i do feel like the mark 7 has a little bit more space inside they've designed it slightly differently the center console and all that is a slightly different fit so you do have slight space advantage in one of those and a mark 5 i do like the center a little bit more on a mark 5 but it doesn't have the steering wheel it doesn't have the aggressive seats like this has so i feel like it is weirdly in a class of its own this car it is different to a mark 5 and a mark 7 and rightly it should be because it's a different generation of golf got a soft spot for these now after driving it it does everything that i wanted it to and it's the little silly things like the s3 that ian has he's got an s3 as well that we shot for the channel town a man aggressively swearing at me in a white mini there <laughs> Not sure why. Anyway, it's a it's a comedy act every time I go out in one of these uh, shoots, I tell you. I feel like they are holding their price in a weird way. The R version of this definitely is. And as we come into this car park, actually, there's a Mark 7 right here. And that is a different car, but I couldn't tell you why right now. We'd have to do a back-to-back -back on it because there's no way you're gonna notice a difference from that car to this car. All I know is I now have a soft spot for the Mark 6 and I think they're priced right in the market. But as ever guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you did like this style of video, let me know in the comments below. If you have a car that you want me to shoot for the channel, please let me know in the comments below. Get at me on Instagram, Facebook, anywhere like that. I'm always looking to shoot subscribers' cars and I'll see you all on the next video.